What's poppin', what's poppin', what's poppin'? Welcome to Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And this week, we got a special, special, special guest. Kind of a special concept, but a special guest. Uh, the, the man behind the number one motivational speaker. The man behind mm. some of the most viral videos that you've seen. The man behind... A new situation called Solo Creator Pro, something like that. Mm. I could have messed no. it up. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's I was like, right I, I could have messed it up. I would be. Listen, this is this is why I'm the the high pilot. It is what it is. Uh, we have none other than Carl. Hmm. Hold on, this hold on. What do you think about Carl? Because I just, something just came up to me. But what do you think about Carl? Uh, I'm honestly, as as a as a close friend, I'm most excited about his growth. Like to see his growth that's happened over the last eight months. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, man. The and at one point I was very mad at him, uh, 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 slightly uh, pissed off, if you will. Excuse my French, uh, just because, <laughs> for real. I, I was just I was just learning so much about his many different talents. Uh, the dude had an advanced degree in in film editing, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, the, he can play the guitar. He can play the piano. He and I was just like, dude, I, I, you're freaking awesome! <laughs> like you're so many talents. So yeah, no, he he's an, he's he's an, a special human being, man. To to really bring it all together and just start sharing it with the world now. I'm excited for people to see the Carl that we know. Listen, we're doing too much. Let's get into the intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. Before we bring in Carl, you know I got to do the review of the week. You know what I mean? <laughs> got to do the review of the week. Shout out to, who is this? Manalo 2020. Man, I hope I didn't mess that up. That guy, Sounds right? About right? I hope so. Sounds about right. Sounds about right? Yes, <laughs> yes. All right. Anyways, um, Hidden Gems. Whoa, what an amazing podcast. There's so many gems in this podcast that they are so chill while doing it. Keep on rocking. Y'all killing it. Hey. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you for the review and shout out to everybody who left the review. Continue to do that. But let's bring in Carl. Let's have it, Carl. Mm, let's Going on. Listen, listen. First of all, oh no, go ahead. Hit oh, okay. the air horn. Yummy. Yummy. Got it. Hey, I want to see how, how I want to see how many air horns we can get in this episode. I don't know if we count, Ooh. but mm, I'll be watching. I'll I be like watching that. and I'm seeing it. So I just want to like see how that. many we could get in this episode, man. But I just want to start out by saying this, Nikki. Mm. Boom. That's all I want to start off hey. by saying right there. Hey. Like, I'm, I'm paying attention, y'all. For all our YouTube people, <laughs> you will see that he is wearing the the Giants jersey. Oh, not the jersey. The, the hoodie. I got excited. The Giants gotta hoodie. Represent. But um, Moose, Moose, I, um, I wanted to bring in Carl because, first off, we work very close with him. And I think from a standpoint of building something to now having something of his own, we have to talk about that. We have to. Yeah. I don't I don't know if you want to start it off, but I got Absolutely. I got questions ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's only right to uh, show of course and this assessment is this assessment. This episode <laughs> is also brought to you by the flight assessment as we always like to give credit or draw references from that report just to help people to continue to make the connections you know uh, for those who were tuned tuned in with us back when we were doing the Facebook show uh we had Carl on and obviously did a very actually no we didn't have Carl no, on No we didn't did we? 
No, oh, that's, that's my, my first bad. time, Actually, man. Yeah, my bad. No, I, I, that was for the community call. Okay, there we go. My bad. That was my yeah. mistake. Uh, Eddie, leave that in. That's, that's okay. I, it is what it is. It works. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, man. All right. Here we go. It's only going to get better from here. I promise. It's only going to get better from here. <laughs> no, but, but I, I think it is important to uh, kind of defeat some of the stereotypes that have been associated with the grounds crew. So, so Carl, I mean, uh, if, if you can, I actually would like to start off by asking you, you know, talk to us a little bit about some of those stereotypes that you've heard about the grounds crew in terms of what, what you originally thought it was and in terms of how it was spoken mm. about and presented. And, and just give us maybe a little bit of history about how you've slowly started breaking some of those barriers because the Carl that we know today is definitely a lot more advanced and, and still true, still a genuine person, but just on a whole nother level. Hold on. Hold on. What about the people who don't know who Grounds Crew is? What about mm. the people who don't know who okay. a pilot mm. and everything is? <laughs> what, what, what happened? What happened? All right. This is what we're going to do. All right. Yeah. Oh, wait. The pilot's missing. Hello. All right. For those who don't know what the grounds crew is and all that great stuff, we always go based off the flight assessment. So you have the pilot, you have the flight attendant, you have the grounds crew, and you have the air traffic controller. In a minute and 30, or however long you want to feel like doing it, can you describe each and every single one of the moose? I'm going to do it under a minute today for Carl. So the pilot, based off of the four, Let's go. The four dominant personality types that we know exist in the world, the pilot we know is all about making big decisions, bottom line oriented, and the A-type personalities that move very fast and want to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Next up, you have those flight attendants that rely more a lot on their charisma, their charm, their personality, and their relationships to really build and connect with others. And then, of course, you have the grounds crew where in the airport theme, you notice they're involved in a lot of different areas. They are getting people's bags onto the plane and off the plane. They're bringing up beverages and snacks maybe to the flight attendants so that they can serve them to passengers on the plane. They're helping even the pilot navigate the plane from the runway to the gate and vice versa. So they're involved in a lot of different areas, which is typically the reason why it's easy to throw the blanket statement out there and say that grounds crews are more so supportive. They're behind the scenes because when you're on the plane, you can't necessarily hear them talking. But that's the stereotype that we really want to break down today with the example of Carl. But then lastly, you have the air traffic control. Those who are also in a tower somewhere can be behind the scenes as well, but working more so with details, right? They're thinking about uh, making sure that no two planes are taken off from the same runway at the same time. So they're more so involved with the minor details to make sure that everything is going according to plan. Okay. okay. I, gave, I gave him the speed it. version. The speed yeah, version for Carl. It. You got it. Okay. Bring it back to Carl. My bad. My bad. So, uh, so I'll take it, Moose, because I, I got the question. Um, man, just to paint the picture, Moose kind of started off where you see the grounds crew as just that support role, right? And I'll be honest, when I first kind of like started diving into the assessment, like I'm like, it, it, it pigeonholed me like and not in a negative way, like it pigeonholed like, yo, this is really like a pretty accurate description of how I see myself. Mm. Now, the challenge with that is and you guys have all heard the saying good guys finish last. Like as I understood what the ground screw temperament was, as I understood our tendencies like that started to ring really, really true for me. And I was like, I don't know that I like that. But at that time, I didn't know what to do about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm watching and I'm like, yo, and I'll take me as an example. I'm putting in a lot of hours. The stuff that I'm doing, I'm putting in a lot of time. And let's just be specific, Moose. If, and I did some research on the ground screw group. And dude, there's probably at least 20 different roles in there. Like as it relates to, you know, the, the, the actual aviation and traveling and all that. There's literally like 20 different roles. And that's just me doing a scan, right? Right. But as I watch them, dude, like they all fall into this. We're going to move this and help. We're the gate agents. We're doing this. We're doing that. And I'm like, there's got to be more. It, this is not like, a, and let me be honest with you guys. My wife was the person that gave me like the uppercut. Like I laid down. This is like the first couple of weeks going through the assessment. And one night I'm just kind of like frowning. 
And she's like, dude, what's going on? And I'm like, this is true. Like, this is who I am. And I don't know what to do. Like, I'm stuck. I feel like this is the rest of my life. Like, I'm just going to be the help guy. And she said to me, very, very direct. So you're going to let a piece of paper dictate you and the rest of your life. Mm. And I was like, whoa, like, truth immediate reaction is like man you don't know what you're talking about like i can say that to her of course like that but in my mind i was like man she don't know let me just be quiet but it it stuck in my mind moose it stuck in my mind it's like okay you're going to let this piece of paper dictate and define who you are and what your life looks like she said the assessment is meant to help you identify where you are it's not a life sentence and that's mm. where like, I started kind of like diving into, okay, like, what does that mean? And of course, we talk about this over, we go, we, we, guys, we, like, I'm not sure if y'all understand that we studied this thing and still study it. Like, we really dive into this and understand what it means for our lives personally before anybody else hears about it. So as I start looking at it, most now I'm starting to understand the tendencies and I'm starting to see how this tendency is a great tendency for a certain period in your life. So let me talk about it like this. I'll be more direct. We love collaboration. We love working with other people. Like right now, with, I'm on with Moose and Nikki. Like, y'all, this is a regular phone call for us. We talk all the time, right? This is fam. This is fun. We love, I love the collaboration, but I don't want to deal with conflict. And I, I, I want to go real slow with that. Conflict is something that we shy. And conflict in any form, right? So can anybody see the problem with that? Like, we're three different human beings. Like anybody else I work with, there's going to be some kind of conflict. We're never always going to agree. It's not possible. So how do I want to collaborate, but I don't want to deal with conflict? So now as I start to look into the assessment moves, I'm just like, yo, some of the things just don't, it's not going to get me where I'm going. Like I can't love collaboration, but not deal with conflict, right? I can't want to be a leader and do more, but not make decisions. And that's another area. Like we're slower to make decisions. It's not like we can't make decisions. We just like to really think things through and try to understand like, okay, so if this happens, then we overthink and over process moves. And dude, as I started studying the assessment, I'm realizing if you don't do something, this is my wife's point. If you don't do something about it, if you don't use these tools the way they're supposed to be used, then you are kind of trapped. And you're not going to get the results out of life that you want. But if you understand it and you can make the adjustments, dude, it's whatever you want it to be. And I could go on, but I want to, hey, I want y'all to, y'all guide me in this. I don't want to just talk. Y'all guide me. No, you're good. You're good. So this is what we're going to do because I want, I want people to know a little bit more about you and how did you get to where you are. So let's bring it back to like how did this all start with Eric Thomas? Like, where were you? How did y'all meet? What, like, people want to know. Got it. Got it. So, short version of the story, Nikki. I'm, I'm a little kid growing up in Barbados. Don't get confused, y'all. I tell people the B is not Boston. Don't get it confused. This is Barbados. I know for y'all it means something else, but this is just my reminder of where I come from, all right? <laughs> Um, but growing up in Barbados, man, we're exposed to my dad was a science and math teacher. So I followed a science path. I ended up going undergrad, doing my math, uh, doing undergrad in biology. And then I go back to Barbados, Nikki worked for a year in Barbados. And at that age, I'm, I don't want to go into that. I was young. Let me say it like that. I was young. Um, but I realized that there's gotta be more to life. I was working, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a check, but I'm like, this can't be it. So I literally worked for a year and I was like, I got to do something else. I don't know what it was. And my brother is at this time about to go to Michigan State University. So he calls and he's like, yo, what's up? We're talking. And he's like, man, you can go to grad school. And I'm like, what's that? Like, I honestly had no thought of going back to school. But he was like, yo, you could go to grad school. You could you already got your undergrad in biology. You could just apply and you could see if you get into grad school. I was like, all right, I'll follow the path. And short version, I apply to grad school. I end up going to Andrews University, which is like, um, Benton Harbor area here in Michigan and do, going to get my master's degree in biology. So I do this whole process. I get done. And literally that summer, Eric moves back to Michigan. We happen to attend the same church. So I'm going to the church and I took a friend with me and my friend was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, Eric Thomas. And I was like, who, Eric, who? 
Like the dude sitting over there and I'm like, not really. Like I've seen him at the church one or two times, but I have no idea who he is. They're like, oh no, he speaks and he does stuff. I was like, cool. Like, I, you know, we'll meet at some point, I'm sure. Um, so we literally, so I'm graduating and I literally, I applied, listen to what I'm telling y'all. This is um, CSI. Uh, what's the show? Yeah. CSI was the name of the show. It had just come out. Everybody was into, you know, this crime scene stuff. I was like, dude, I got a science degree. I'm about to be a, a crime scene, whatever they're called, like investigator, whatever it is. I applied to every police precinct in the state of Michigan. I'm talking about all the way up north, like zero replies. And the ones that replied denied me. So I'm like, what is going on? So I called them back, y'all. And I was like, y'all volunteer. Y'all even got to pay me because I know who I am. I know I'm a hard worker. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to make some stuff happen, right? Mm -hmm. So you get me, you see my work ethic. It's a wrap. Dude, they denied the volunteer offer. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching E at church and I'm like, okay, dude, my friend just said you're doing a lot. And truthfully, I ain't doing jack right now. So if you need help with anything, just let me know. And that, my friends, is the end of my story. <laughs> dot, <laughs> dot, 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 dot. <laughs> that was about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And man, what a ride. What a ride. So we connected back then. C and E had connected maybe, I don't, I don't think it was a year yet. They were together a couple, a couple months before that. Mm -hmm. And I literally just started going on campus with them and just whatever, again, ground school, y'all, whatever I could do to help. Like, neither of them are technical. So anything like, yo, we we got to speak at a school. Can you do like a flyer or a little, just a little something? I'm like, yo, truth was no, but I'll figure it out real quick. So I just started just messing around with stuff, figuring stuff out. And I would just sit there, whatever we needed to get done. I try to get it done. My first actual job, I shared this a while back on the podcast. Um, but my first actual job was to take them to the airport. I was the driver. That was my first actual job. Like they were taking a group of students out to Crenshaw University to do a session and they just needed somebody to drive. So I'm like, bet, I got y'all. That was, so that was my entry level job in ETE. I was going to drive the team to the airport. But yeah, that was the start, man. I love it. Mm. Moose? I, I like how you said that. Uh, and that's where the story ends because pretty much the rest is history, <laughs> right? The rest it's is like history. For, for 10 to 12 years, that's how it worked out. Talk, talk to us a little bit more about uh, one of my favorite parts, which, which was a complete shock to me, although I've known you for a good amount of time. As you started to find a role that you were probably going to consistently, which is really, I imagine the YouTube space, like how did that YouTube space and your role in, in the the content and videography space. How did, how did that come about? Tell us a little bit about that. Got you. So I remember the first time I heard Eric speak somewhere. Cause again, remember I had never heard of Eric. I just met him, saw him at the church. So starting to, to connect, we had some school gig, like I'm talking about like elementary school. So we all rolled to the gig and I remember sitting in the room most and just like, First of all, let me let me paint the picture better. I don't know what to expect. Like we're going to talk to like a bunch of little kids. Like I have no idea what what are we going to do? Like I'm just all right, let's just see where it goes. But we get in that room and E, y'all know E, he's not going to dim it down because you a 7 year old. Like E, I'm talking about lit the room up, teachers, administrators, everybody lit it up. And I remember Moose walking out of that room and saying to myself like, "Wait a minute. What we just experienced." And I'm talking about like chills, you know, like I can't explain to you what I experienced because I've never been exposed to that, right? The first, first time here, I'm like, whoa, like, I can't, like, what just, what happens now? Like, what, like, I'm like, I can't figure, like, dude, that can't end in that room. Like, people, people need to hear that. Like, that was so powerful. Like, kids all across the country, administrators all across the world need to hear that. How do we do that? And it's just like, well, we got to start recording it. And truthfully, we don't know anything. We don't know how to do it. So let me just kind of fast forward a bit. That same trip to Crenshaw that they took, they brought footage back. And this is how I met Ken. And some of you guys know Ken. He worked with the ETF family for a couple of years. But Ken literally was the person. He was in grad school doing video production at the time. And Ken, would he took the footage and started making some, um, just, just kind of putting some content together. I literally moose went and stood over Ken's shoulder for two weeks straight, day in, day out. Well, if he was at work at 730 in the morning, I was there at seven o'clock. Let's hear what I'm saying closely. If he was there until nine, I was there until 930. Like whatever he was doing, I stood glued to his shoulder other than going to the bathroom. I stood with my man every single day for two weeks straight. I figured out the software. I figured out the camera equipment. I figured out everything he was doing. 
And I was like, yo, I got it. Let's get to work. So we didn't have any equipment. We didn't have anything. That's how we started just using equipment from Michigan State University and that kind of stuff then. But Ken was, he was kind of, you know, he was in grad school, so he was kind of busy. So he couldn't take it on fully. So I was with Ken, but I was with ETA. So I would learn with Ken and we, and it, it worked out that we actually were in the same building when we were, you know, operating at on campus. So I would literally just go up there with Ken for a while, come back. And that just piece by piece was just literally learning. I'll never forget I did this, my first edit, and I had this, Nikki's going to laugh at me. I had this page turn effect in it, Nikki. Oh, I thought I was killing the game. Like, I had this graphic into transition. You just saw the page turn and E on the other page. Dude, Ken was like, do not ever do that again. I thought I was crushing it. <laughs> Moose, I thought I was killing the game. Mm -hmm. I thought about crushing it. Don't ever it. do that again. Ken looked yeah. at me and was like, don't you ever do that foolishness again but that was my start man just humble like literally just I'm, I'm going to figure it out i'm going to figure it out so i had ken as just kind of a resource and then whatever he was shooting whatever he was doing i'm recording i'm gonna try to put it together so that's that was the beginning of it and youtube came about specifically because we'd recorded the infamous guru speech right um and he had a presentation for the incoming freshmen and we're like yo y'all need to see this but where is it like how do we do that and it's like okay let me go figure it out and we went online and figured out, oh there's this platform called youtube we can upload the content to and boom so we started that was like the birth of youtube we put that on there just for those students and again the rest is history that's wow. crazy that's crazy so i think you you saw that youtube was starting to work right what time, what what exactly did you know when it was like, yo, we got a brand? And what was the first step that you had to do once it started working? So it's it's the hard part about that question is, Nikki, is like we did things every single day, to be mm -hmm. honest. So it wasn't like we were looking to see it was daily you know like we talk about like my kids like i don't see the growth in them but you go away moose you come back and see my kids now you're gonna be like man they're huge right. so it was kind of yeah. that experience for us it was a day-to-day -day grind like every single day we were working on something like making stuff up i'm not playing like we're making brochures and flyers and we're just making stuff up we are traveling we're going to schools like i said we went out of cali a couple of times did the school there and it just felt and again y'all put this all in the context of the grounds crew support role i was in heaven right i'm doing purpose i'm with some dudes that's rocking solid we're changing the world like i didn't need nothing else in life so to be honest nikki it was probably years down the line like it wasn't even something mm -hmm. that i would say like at the beginning it i remember we got a call from i think the pistons mm -hmm. and that was kind of like was it the pistons either the pistons or whichever the first and i think it would have was the piston was the first nba team that called and i was like whoa the pistons call us like to me that was kind of like a big because i for us we had, we had done colleges we started doing you know a whole lot of schools just across the country so it was like everything was just such a natural progression but when the nba called it's like oh this is like a real step now you know what i mean so i'd say that moment like i heard and i was we were in we were in phoenix doing an event for quicken loans e and i were in phoenix or what was it scottsdale it was scottsdale and i remember e answering the phone and it was like joe dumars or somebody calling i was like mm. you say who and he put it on speakerphone. I'm listening. They're like, yo, what up, E, man? We'd love to have you. And I'm just sitting there like, yo, this is unreal. Like, this is the piston. So that would be my answer, Nikki. But it's a tough, it was just a gradual, like, you know, process throughout the whole thing. That makes sense. Moves? Well, so now, I imagine at some point, okay, now you find your role. You're getting good at what you do. You're picking up traction. People are responding. You got the attention of the NBA or major sports teams. Uh, what were some of those early challenges, right, where people think that, oh, it just seems like a straight shot to the top just because maybe you were an early adapter on YouTube, right? You guys were fortunate. Uh, tell us a little bit about maybe some of the, the early challenges that you almost don't think about anymore, but definitely could have turned this thing around, you know, God forbid, had you not gotten under control. Hmm. So truth be told, we were, again, we, there was no, like, I don't want to say it. We didn't have a direct line of focus. So it wasn't like we were planning to go to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? We weren't planning to go here. We weren't planning. It was like every, like I said, every day grind. The thing that I think, I would say one of the things that really made a shift most, 
and I'm, I'm trying to really think it through because I want, I want people to like, you know, understand the process. One of the things that really changed our trajectory was not us. Giovanni, I don't know if you guys remember, Giovanni took the Secrets oh, to yeah. Success video and he redid the video with him working out too. And if you guys don't know it, just go look that up. It, it was a different name. I, I forgot the name. But he took the same video that he did, The Secrets to Success, The Guru Story, but he put himself working out to it at the time he was trying out to get to the, the NFL. And he put himself working out to this video. So he's doing, you know, these crazy sprints and doing all this crazy stuff. And most that was a huge transition for us. Nothing to do with us, but it was mm. a huge transition for us because watch this. What people were seeing is this guy, a loud black guy in a classroom talking to kids. That's what people were seeing. It was powerful, but it was in that context. Now, right. when Giovanni's working out to it, it all of a sudden kind of opened up the horizons for us because, oh, it's not only a, it doesn't only apply to schools anymore. Like now it's applying to as bad as you want to breathe. I don't care where you are in life. It not applies across the board. So when people started seeing him and his video went bananas, ours, you know, was growing steadily, but his just went bananas. So as people are starting to look at that video moves, and this was, I, again, I don't remember the years, just a blur. But when people start looking at his video, now that kind of opened up their lens to see like, oh, what this dude is saying is bigger than that. So the, for us, the, I can't tell you that there was something specific we could have done. We, would, we were on a steady path. We were growing, right, from week to week. But I think by putting things in action moves, that allowed, let's, let's just say nature to take its course. Now there's yeah. outside influences that are actually coming to help propel this motion that we're on. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's crazy because I feel like in a way it's, it's ordained. Like if you think about it, people are watching the video, but rather than getting caught up in the video and just kind of like going on to the next one, it was something about the sound or the voice that were like, sound. wait, but who's yes. that guy? Right. And it's yes. like, that's the part that I always feel really built a lot of the success because when they went back and said or looked for who's that guy, that's when they stumbled across all the work that you had created, I imagine. Yep. yep. And, and again, we had now started, by this time we were creating the TGIM. So it's a weekly video. Uh. So by the time you go search, who's the guy? Oh, that's this dude called Eric Thomas. Oh, let me search Eric Thomas. Oh, you got like a whole two seasons of TGIM up here. Oh, Oh, there's some there's some stuff that we can look at and dude again just constant just constant like just motion like a body in motion right we just kept moving right. man so it, it couldn't help but grow that's a huge lesson there man that's a huge lesson man. Yeah, I, had to get I think i counted it. three nikki i think that's I'm three so it. far i don't I'm know what the record it. is but i'm counting hey hey we're gonna get more so here here's my question what was the first whether it's physical or digital product that you guys did that you were like, okay, this one works. And then let's see if I could get him to open up. Which one uh -oh. didn't? <laughs> yeah, you know, I always uh -oh. got to, you know, I got to do uh -oh. it. <laughs> Man. Um, whew, so the, 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 the book, Secrets to Success, an audio book, that combination was was real. Mm -hmm. Like we had, I think the number was like close to 500 pre-orders for the Secrets to Success book. And yeah, that was, that 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 we knew something was going, cause that was kind of like we did, y'all heard T, CJ talk about the t-shirts. So I'm trying to find something else, Nikki, cause the t-shirts are definitely the one that, that we did not work. Right. Uh, so I'm trying to find something else with that one. Um, but the, the Secrets to Success book and audio book, and those of you that have not listened to the audio, but we, to be honest, we have not pushed that a lot, but it's an amazing product. So if you have not, go, it's on Audible, you can go grab that. But that, that combination of products was amazing. Now, what didn't work? Oh, well, we had a couple different designs for the When You Want to Succeed As Bad As You Want to Breathe shirt, and mm -hmm. I don't have them. I'll try to get them to you, Nikki. But we just had some that were, yeah, they just were not the ones. They were not the I'm ones. I'm trying to have them. So, I'm trying to have uh, them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, CJ has them. We'll find them. We'll find them. But we had a couple of designs that was like, mm, mm, mm. And, and again, we started with T-shirts primarily. Mm -hmm. So anything that didn't work would have been a T-shirt design at that point. Because, again, it was still new, right? But by the time we got to the book, we had started creating momentum. We had given so much to the audience that, 
the thing that we always say is like the audience felt like they owed us something, like just a thank you. So, dude, a $25 shirt, you know what I mean? A $30, whatever the book was at the time, um, it felt like they connected with us in such a way that, man, whatever it is, we, we are going to support you. But I, yeah, Nikki, I ain't got nothing. The, the shirt with CJ is the biggest blunder that we had for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, th- well, let me ask a follow up real quick. Um, mm-hmm. When did you know it was time to do products? Hmm. It, th- there was a demand. There was there a was. demand. Um, yeah, people started, and I, I'm trying to remember some more specific, but from the videos, and again, we're doing these videos weekly now, so people are starting to kind of, you know, become a part of the tribe, right? They're responding and they're asking for stuff. And uh, there'll be a couple of comments about, man, that should be a shirt. Man, that should be a, you know what I'm saying? Um, does this dude have a book? Does this, like, or, or what's your recommended books? Like, stuff like that. So people started kind of hinting at some stuff, and it's just like, oh, like if we pay attention, like really what they're saying is like, we need more from you. We need something in a different form from you. So what is that? So yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be it. Boost, I got a follow up, but I'm, I'm going to let you ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, take us down that path, Carl. So how long do you stay in that role, you know, with E, I mean, obviously you're still with the company now, but just in that particular role with media content, what was the, like, what was how far did you ride that out? Dude, so I and <laughs> I, I laugh when I think back at these stories. So for those of you that follow us closely, CJ, his wife, Candace, had gotten a position with GE. So CJ and Candace were literally traveling across the world. Like, you know, they were doing different six month rotations. So E and I were doing TGIM. But then when gigs came, Moose, I'm traveling with E to the gig. So we're, you know, whatever equipment we have by this time. We're trying, so now we got a couple of shirts we're trying to sell. We got a couple of books we're trying to sell. So I want y'all to think of this picture, like, like see the whole picture. We get to an event. He's about to go speak on stage. It's just E and I, so we got to set up the product table. I got to go set up the slides. We got to get the merch out. I don't even know how we're watching the merch and people ain't grabbing. I don't even remember. I don't know, but merch is out on the table. We got to sell it, right? He's getting ready to go speak. Slides are setting up. I'm making sure the audio for the house sounds good because I don't want E going in there. We, we went to a couple of places and E's blowing his voice out. Y'all know he's just going to give, give, give. He's blowing his voice out. So I'm like, no, we need to turn that up. I don't care. Turn that up. So we're trying to get the room set up. Then I got to go back and set up the cameras. Then I got to go back and set up our audio recording because we learned early, Moose, that I can't wait on them to send me their audio. Like that's, that never worked. Oh, you know, yeah, we'll record and send it to you. I was like, okay, appreciate it. But no, we got our own. So I'm making sure he's mic'd up, batteries in the mic. There's so many things happening. I'll be honest with y'all. I don't know how we did it all. I don't know. But most through that, we just learned, you know, we learned so much. You know what I mean? We learned so much. So we just started to get more efficient with things. So truth be told, I did that. When did I stop? When Nikki came on? <laughs> Nikki, when did you come on? That's probably when I stopped to that extent, Moose. Oh. Ted came on. and Ted, Actually, let me go back. Ted came on. Ashante, and she would help with the merch as we would travel. Ted would take on the merch part of it. But then in terms of the media side, like I did it up until Nikki came on. And Nikki was such a savage. I, I, can I tell Nikki's story? I'm telling you, Nikki was working full time. She was working full time. I was just like, yo, like if y'all need help. And I'm like, Nikki, don't play with me. I need a lot of help. It's a million things going on. I'm trying to edit, shoot. We're traveling. We're doing all this. And she was like, bet. Moose, Nikki would get stuff done. I'm talking about like, I don't know. I, first of all, I don't think she really had a job. Let me just say that personally. She said that. I don't think so. <laughs> because uh, here's why. <laughs> uh, no, I had here's a job. Why, I had Moose. a full time I had a full time job. I was a whole IT person before this lifestyle. Don't don't get it twisted. Don't do that. Hey, <laughs> she gotta show me like some W twos or something. Was, I got was, you. I would send her something, and it would be done in thirty minutes. I'm talking about like videos, wow. like stuff to pull. Stuff. It will be done in thirty minutes or less. Listen to what I'm saying. In the middle of the day. So I'm like, oh yeah, she's not working. She's just lying. She trying to, <laughs> she just trying to <laughs> trying to impress me. She, she ain't working for real. She just trying to sound like she's busy. But no. So up until that point, Nikki came almost and took the 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 video production, social media, IT side, all that. She cut that in half for me. Like immediately before being on staff. Listen to what I'm saying. Before being on staff. She mm-hmm. was still working full time. So up until that point, man, it was. And it's a couple of years, so I'd say five, six years strong that, you know, that was the role. 
And I still continue doing media, you know, but of course, like I said, Nikki just kind of brought that down and down and down and down. And now I f- look, I was like, yo, Nikki, just go. I ain't even want to touch Help it no me. more. You savage. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. So, yeah. so- so, because I'm going to try not to speak about me, but I will speak a little bit. Um, so before me, right, what was the point? Because the way you describe things, is, it seemed like a lot. It just seemed seemed a bit heavy, right? Um, was there a particular day, event, situation that you were like, okay, I need to duplicate myself. This is This is too much. I can't. This is, I'm doing 19 million things and I'm one person and I have a whole wife and kids and stuff like that. Like, was there a particular time? So here's the dangerous part. And I'll tie it back in with the ground screw. The dangerous part about that, Nikki, is it was every day. Every day I knew it was too much. But wow. there's a oh, part what? of me that's so all, strongly. You, that, like you didn't just say what yeah. you just said. It, it was every day, Nikki. It's a part of, and again, like I told you, we were grinding, like not playing. I don't know if people understand this, but like there was no holidays to like, there was no birthdays. Like we were working every single day doing something. So like there was a time, of course, before we started, it was just sitting in the room, meeting, talking, working on documents, whatever. But there was a time now when we're on the road, like I'm saying, like he finished speaking. We got a flight at four o'clock tomorrow morning to get back home for something else we got to do. And the edit still got to be done. So guess what? We get back from the gig, pack merchandise, pack all that. I'll pack my stuff for the flight, put it there. And then I got to sit down and edit to get it done. Mm-hmm. I might sleep for an hour. I might sleep for an hour and a half. And then we got to get up, hit the airport. And we weren't traveling first class. We weren't, it wasn't none of that. Then we had to drive an hour to get to the airport. Like it was real. Take the rental car back, get in the line like everybody else. You see what I'm saying? So it was every single day was too much, but Moose, my desire to be a part of this thing was so great that I was willing to just stick in that role for, for, let me just be honest for too long. I should have duplicated myself, Nikki in year one, year two, like that was necessary. But again, as we talk about the assessment and understanding yourself and your tendencies, that was the thing that I loved. I just like being a part of this thing so much that I didn't take care of myself in the process. That's the truth. Mm. Formal, so, so, so <laughs> No, I mean, stay, stay on, stay on that, that same breath though. Like you're now realizing, okay, I'm, I'm willing to stay because maybe it gives meaning, it gives purpose, you love the impact and what's happening that I'm willing to kind of carry the burden, although I'm probably doing too much. But there's a next step, right? Like, I, I don't know, I guess I'm trying to pinpoint the moment where you wanted to do more, but those previous programs of what you were accustomed to kept pulling you back. Like, no, no, Carl, you can't be a leader. You can't launch your own program or you can't do that. Did that happen at any point? And, and you know, like, how did you kind of begin to seek help or, or, or begin to, to shut that noise down so, so you can introduce where you're at now? So the truth is, Moose, I stayed busy so I didn't have to think like that because I didn't want to think I don't want to say I was successful in the area that I was doing. You get what I'm saying? Like things were working. Yeah. I was getting the stuff done. It was beating me up. Right. And and please don't take this out of context. It was beating all of us up. It's not like he was working me hard. No, he was exhausted, too. So don't think like it was like that. Like I want to make that clear for people. Um, but just the the biggest transition, I would say, most of this, it, it'll take you a slightly different way than where you than where you were going with your question. But it's having my son when Jordan was born. That was like a moment where I was like, oh, this is bad because now I have a newborn son. And now (laughs) listen to what I'm saying. Don't laugh at me. Now my son is sitting on my lap at three o'clock in the morning while I'm editing in the other hand. So it's like I'm going to find a way to get it all done regardless. Like who needs sleep? Like I'll figure it out later on. My son can't sleep. He's up at three o'clock. Cool. Well, if I'm up, I got to get up anyway. I'll let my wife sleep and I'll go in there. And literally he's sitting on on my lap with this hand and I got the mouse. I got literally just trying to edit with the other hand until one day I figured out, Nikki, that he liked Bobby McFerrin. Like I guess Bobby McFerrin was 
engaging enough so i would literally just put i don't know what device i had something maybe my wife's computer or something right there on the side next to me and he would watch bobby mcferrin and i would sit there and edit three o'clock four o'clock five o'clock six o'clock in the morning and most like all this time i'm knowing so i'm believing in what we're doing and i'm believing that someday here's the part that i think where i i i admit that i've gone wrong i knew that i needed help I knew that it wasn't, I couldn't keep going like this forever. I, either I'd get sick or, you know what I'm saying? It just couldn't keep going like that. But I wasn't bold enough, courageous enough to ask for help, to seek out, like, yo, somebody needs to come help. Like, I just literally just ate whatever came my way. Like, I'm figuring it out. We're going to get it done. Um, and I, the, the, the hurdle is we were getting it done. I was having success. So that's the part that makes it scary. Right. If things were failing, I probably would have been forced to do something different. Right. But because things were working like, all right, just keep going. This we, By the end of this year, it's going to change. That's what I would keep saying. By the end of this month, it's going to change. Man, two more years and I promise you we're going to be over the hump and it's going to get easier. And the truth is we were getting over the hump. I wasn't getting over the hump. Does that make sense? I was still in that yeah. zone of, man, the more I do, the more I touch, the more we're going to get it. Keep going. And there was some time where my family, where my wife, my son, like, my, well, he couldn't talk then, but my wife would have to have real conversations with me. Like, dude, you're not balanced. You're way off. Like you're putting, like your, your family is coming like second or third to the other stuff that you got going on. And here's the funny part, y'all, man, it's so dangerous, Moose. E and CJ were like, dude, you need to go. He literally said, dude, I don't care how long you take off. When your son is born, go somewhere. I want to see you. He told the staff, don't call me. Don't contact me. And I was still involved. You see what I'm saying? So it was like a very deep rooted, like I got to add value. Like I got to be a part of this thing. So I, like, dude, I, I, I pigeonholed myself for so long into that until I, I think until the assessment moves, truthfully, until wow. the assessment, Chris Daniel stood, we were in somewhere out West. I want to say, Man, I could see the room. I remember where we are. I want to say, like, it wasn't San Diego. Anyway, somewhere out west. And he said, man, y'all are like sufferers in silence. And when I tell you there's something inside of me, Moose, that I was like, dude, I've never heard it expressed, but I, I resonate with that. Like, that's how I feel. I, you're never going to look at me as a whiner. I don't want to complain about it. But that's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm suffering in silence. And like, dude, like, if you don't ask for help, it's not going to come. Right. If you don't put that out there, it's not going to come. So how long do you keep going doing the way you doing it the way you're doing it? You know, before, like I said, you either get sick or whatever, like you got to find a way. So that was kind of like a, the first, you know, thing that I kind of like, OK, you you. Yeah, this is real. Like you got to do something. And, and just let's be real. Chris was how many years ago? Like we were introduced to the assessment, maybe four. I, I don't know my timeline, but maybe I'd say maybe four years ago. It's been that long. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's about four somewhere and in a that half. range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're talking right. most of seven, eight years operating with that, you know, with that paradigm. Not seeing myself in leadership. Not seeing myself, seeing myself as support. Even though I'm telling y'all, every single opportunity he got, he's calling me on stage. He's trying to put me in the position. He's forcing me into these lanes, yeah. and I'm, I'm just not embracing it. I'm not because I'm, I'm just seeing myself here. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's five, y'all. That's five. We're getting up here. We're getting Listen. up there. Okay, so tell us a story that was the most impactful for you as far as you knowing that, yeah, this works. Like, this brand really, like, there's a point to being here. There's a point to working mm. this hard. There's a point for all of this happening. Like, what was that story for you that that really impacted you? I mean, that, that's a lot of them. So I'll give you, the, the short one is, I'm starting to look at the comments on YouTube and watch people like really have transform, transformational moments. Like I'm reading a comment. Okay, we put a video out on YouTube, cool, whatever. And again, please perspective y'all, videos weren't popular then, right? We put a video out and people are responding like, Man, this just changed my life. Man, this just, man, thank you so much. Like, I felt like you were in the room talking to me. So that was, the I'd say, the initial Nikki. But I remember, I'll never forget this. We were in Australia. 
and there's an Australia, y'all. Right, right. Michigan State campus, you know, just sitting in the office, and now we're in Australia, and this lady walks up to Eric. So, I, I'm always again, <laughs> ground screws a lot of roles. So as we're walking, as we're doing stuff, I'm always kind of looking around. I'm not a security guard, so I'm not trying to say like I'm trying to protect E, but I'm trying to see. I'm always looking to see if anybody recognizes E. Like I don't know why. Like I'm always walking around looking. And I saw this lady. I'm talking about like I, I don't know how far, but way down the street. And I'm watching, and she has this kind of look, and you you always see this look like, is that? No, I can't be like. And I'm watching her face, and I'm like, E, I think somebody know you out here. Get ready, buckle up, buddy. Here comes another one, and she comes over slowly because she's cautious. Like it doesn't make sense. Like he in Australia, like there's no way. And before even like anything, like she just literally starts hugging Ian in tears. And I'm like, Ooh, mm. okay, what? Like what's going on? Like what's happening? And she just starts expressing how. It was either her or her husband. I don't want to, I don't remember. I'll, I'll be honest. But either her or her husband literally watched the videos daily and beat cancer. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, whoa, did you just say cancer? <laughs> like she said cancer, like a real disease. Like you're watching videos and you're telling me that the, from the video cancer. So like moments like that, Nikki, and I'll be honest, there's so many of those moments in, in um, Hartford, Connecticut, our first conference. I remember the second morning we were doing, I guess, this little meet and greet with Ian, this lady, similar experience. So I could see this. There's a bunch of these, but this lady was like my son. She's like, my son was off. Like, I'm talking about like going down that path, like about to be in jail or dead. And she said, I turned him on to your videos. And now my man is locked in in school. He's it was a high school kid. He's doing his work. He's cut off. He's cut off his friends. And she's boohooing, crying. And at Moose, of course, I'm in position with the camera right over each shoulder. So I'm hearing everything. And I'm like, whoa. Like, I, I just like doing the videos that felt good. You know, I felt like they would help people. But no, no, no. People's lives are being transformed from the work that we're putting in, man. So I, when I tell you like hundreds of those stories, Nikki, but the more we'd see them, the more anywhere we travel, people just started walking up and you could imagine that's got more and more and more and more and more. And it's just like, oh, wow. Like, yo, we doing something huge. And truth be told, we weren't popular like that yet. Yeah. Right. But still, you could get the bits and pieces of people here. No matter what city we went to, there was somebody that was like, oh, man. And the thing we always say is that they weren't like fanned out. Oh, my God, it's E.T. No, it was always like whoa dude thank you tears like gratitude like sincere it wasn't enough fan out like man i just want to really sincerely say thank you like you're you're helping my family you're changing my life like that kind of stuff so yeah the the yeah that that messes with me every time nikki to just see like think about it from a microphone a camera a computer we could have that impact on the world hmm. number six <laughs> number six <laughs> I love it. I love it. But but Carl, I also remember, man, there was a time where it wasn't, or at least it, it, there was a shift happening. It wasn't just E getting the hugs and people come, you know, people going up to him and recognizing him. You started having that factor too, right? Where people Ooh. were like, Carl, man, <laughs> right? Like they were so excited and geeked to see you. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, yeah. very, very uncomfortable moves. Because again, I man, I just want to be behind the scenes so bad. But y'all know, E, E is about, E is, e is as high a flight attendant as you could get. So yeah. he's about us, team, all this. So E's on stage, every presentation, E's talking about, oh, y'all don't give me thanks for the video. It's Carl. Look, he right there with the camera. Oh, he right there with the camera. Oh, he right. And everywhere we would go, like, again, he always said, it, you know, he would always bring CJ and I with him wherever we went, right? We may not have been on stage, but we were with him in everything that he did. So yeah, Moose, it's weird. Now people are coming up to me like, man, Carl, man, thank you so much. And I'm there's a party was like, what you thanking me for? I ain't do nothing. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? All right. But Again, I got to keep the face and keep the straight face and listen. And, and people are like, really like, man, thanks so much. Y'all are doing so much. Like, man, the good work you're doing. And tr- truth moves, this is, this is me. And I don't want to call it humility, but this is me not embracing who I was. It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for me because people are saying, I'm still looking like E is my hero. So people are coming and telling me like, man, the stuff that you and E doing. In my mind, I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. I'm just letting y'all see how dope E is. But he's telling them, like, y'all got to see how dope Carl is. So it was like this weird little thing for me. I'm like, E, like, I'm sure, I like the appreciation and all that, but I ain't really want people coming up to me like that. But it, it, it was a, a, a moot point 
at some point moves i had to just kind of accept it. it wasn't stopping like it just increased and increased and now people are coming up to me like man you were part of it like you did this and you and now people are seeing me like wow like you helped build the eta brand i had to i have to still embrace it and not run from it moves but it was very uncomfortable yeah. that process was uncomfortable back with a yeah. clap <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. So when, so you help build this huge brand, right? And when did you know you had to do a brand for yourself? Like <laughs> what was, talk to us about that situation of what you have right now. I don't want to give too much about it. I want you to say it, but now you have something. But you mm. build something, you could have just stayed right there. What happened? Exposure, man. Exposure environment. Again, I'm around Eric, CJ. Of course, we got Maul now, Josh. I'm around people that aren't satisfied with today. Like, I'm around people that aren't satisfied with what they're doing now. Like, now is good. We're going to work. We're going to do stuff. But nobody's satisfied with it. And there came a point for me that... I'm looking like, dude, where, like, it just started to make me question, like, what are you doing? Like, every presentation I hear from E now, like, I'm not listening, like, to edit. Like, I'm listening like you listening, right? I'm listening like, oh, he talking to me too. Like, are you taking care of your family the way you're supposed to? Are you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm really processing, like, okay, cool. This was good. We established it, you know. But Carl, is this it? Like, is this literally like, and when I tell y'all, like, I would say, okay, so Carl, like, if this was your entire purpose now, so you're saying you can die now and you're good. And I'm like, whoa, this is getting kind of real now. Like, what, so if I died, like, Carl did TGIM and helped build ETA. That's my legacy. That's it. Not a bad legacy, though, not by any means. But I'm like, dude, like, I still feel like you got so much in you. Like, there's so much more. And, man, so here's the truth, y'all, because they, they ain't going to act like they was all nice to me. The two people that I'm talking to would call me every day and kick me in the chest. The both of them. Don't let them. <laughs> both of them, y'all. I'm talking about like it was like Nikki would call on Monday and Moose would call on Tuesday. Nikki would call on Wednesday. Moose would call on Thursday. And they're like, dude, like what is wrong with you? Why aren't you doing more? Like we see who you are. We see how dope you are. You sitting here like you can't do this behind the scenes thing forever. And. Man, let me just say, I'm, I appreciate both of you guys because y'all were a part of this equation that helped me to step out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm literally at the point. So, of course, let's, let's just be real. I'm going into this year and I'm saying, again, Nikki, the end of this year has to be different from when it starts. The end of this year has to be different, Carl. I don't want to finish another year moves as just the support guy, as just the grounds crew guy. And again, please, I like to say this in context. I'm never trying to leave ETA. It's not a against ETA. ETA it's none of that. It's we've done this. What else can I add? So I'm sitting here, Nikki, and I'm I'm being real with myself. Like, man, I don't really edit as much no more. We got a team now, so I'm not really doing video as much. I don't really feel like that's my lane. So let me just kind of, I don't know if I could, like I learned media to teach myself how to do TGIM. I didn't go to school to learn like movies and Hollywood and really like, that's not where I went. Right. Mm -hmm. So I never saw myself as the movie guy to teach people how to do this. I literally went to class and came back to edit on sun, like Saturday night for Sunday. That was my educational experience for video. But most there's a, a transition that hit me at the top of this year after y'all jump kicked me 47 times. Like, dude, this is what you have in your hand and this is what people know you for. Like you've built a whole brand with media and now you're saying to me that you don't think you're great in media. You don't think, and these are conversations I'm having with myself. Like you don't yeah. want to put this out. You don't want to do this. You feel like you're going. And I started moves just sitting down of course, we're dealing with this pandemic mess. And I'm like, okay, you're not going to come out of this pandemic the same. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I want to do something that if at the end of this pandemic, I could say I have a project that I created in the pandemic. That was me going into the top of this year. So you're talking about February, March, I'm going into it. And I sat down most and I was like, okay, I'm going to use what I have in my hand. I started doing these slides and they both know they're going to laugh at me, but I did these slides. Listen to what I'm telling y'all in March. 
I created this whole slide. So just going through all the basics of video production, like how to use a camera, what's a lens. Like even if you don't have a camera, let's try to understand your phone. Like what are you doing? And I put the presentation together and I showed both of them. And again, guys, for me, it's not. It's like it's kind of stuff I know. But they both look to me like, dude, I will smack you right now if you don't have some product in the world now. Both of them. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds about right. We, we said it a little bit more PG, but yeah, that was it. I no, y'all, don't, don't listen to that. I didn't. Yeah, they kicked, they kicked me in the mouth. I was like, mouth. no, that, no, I didn't. <laughs> they kicked me in the mouth. Oh, no, they took me out to, where did we go? When y'all were here. Like, they came oh, here, right. y'all, and took me out to eat. That's right. More Before than one shutdown. time. And I was get listen, I was getting, uh, I'm talking about a beat down, y'all. This wasn't no joke. But again, they helped me to start seeing things in a different way. Like, okay, Carl, you, here's the truth. I had this fear that if I started to teach video, I would get video professionals coming to learn. And like I said, I didn't see myself confident in that lane because I didn't learn it like that in my mind. Oh man, I want to fast forward to the end and tell y'all that I got 98% of people that had never done video that are now attracted to the brand that I'm building. 98% of the people. I'm just going to keep you clapping and let that, <laughs> let that ride Most, out. The, the kicker part, and, and this is where I kind of, I, I, like, I want people to hear what I'm saying. If you, any grounds crew or I don't, if you introvert, I don't care where you are, whatever you are, whatever you are in the assessment, like get out of your own head, get out of your own head. I'm saying take action and do something. And the reason I say that, well, so I started with these slides, like I told you guys, the slides ended up, you know what, Carl? All right, let's just start doing some videos. I still have no real direction, but I'm going to start doing something. Let's do videos. I called Moose. I started sending Moose and Nikki like, yo, here's an edit. I just did this one today. And to be honest, y'all, that made it worse for me. They were like, dude, not only are you like dope with the information, like you can teach it. What is wrong right. with you? They're cussing me out again. So now I'm like, okay, like I'm going to try to put some together. And I kind of built it. Here's the truth, y'all. The thing that I built Nikki and Moose I haven't released yet. This is, what are we in? November? I haven't released the thing that I built in March yet. And this is mm. the part I want people to hear. I started taking action, but even that action, how do I want to say, it, was a part of the process to get me to where I am now. So I'm introducing you to the Solo Creator Pro brand. And listen to what I'm saying. Because I had practice going and creating content for all these months, doing it, overthinking, redoing it. Um, Nikki, I'm shooting myself. So half the days I end up not being in focus and I come back and I got to redo it. But after going through all of that moves, I was able to sit down and create the Solo Creator Pro course in less than a week. And when I say less than a week, y'all, not less than a week in terms of like I rushed through it. No, no, no. I went through all the content and I figured out crap. It's only a couple of things that people need to go to get started to take them from zero to hero with their phone. It's only a couple of things that you need to know. And I can I can simplify that for you. Listen to what I'm telling y'all. We did a 21 day challenge in 21 days. And most I'm finding out that it's too much. And the first right. four and five days, people are like, oh, my gosh. Like, dude, I didn't know that we could do that. Or if I just did that or if I just added this, if I just. Simple little tips, Moose, that I was overthinking all these other months trying to create content. Again, one week, we took the top 10 things. And then because I took action, y'all, now I got somebody else. I got Quincy Harris. If y'all don't know who he is, please go check Q out. Q is that guy. Like the city of Philadelphia, like I think Q got the keys to the city. Like he's that guy. Because I'm starting to take action, now I'm seeing other people that are taking action that are connecting with me. Like Q is like, yo, you got behind the camera. I can share stuff in front of the camera, y'all. So we put a challenge together that I don't care if you introvert. I don't care if you extrovert. I don't care if you shot video. I don't care if you never shot video. I don't care. I don't care if you know how to turn your phone on or off. We literally take you from like, yo, here's a couple of tips that you can do 10 days behind the camera. Here's some stuff that you can do. And then Q comes in like, yo, here's 10 days of what it's like being in front of the camera. We are... We're almost done with the first challenge. We open again in December for the second, the second cohort to come through. And most, the reviews that we're getting, like I'm, and when I tell you, I'm in there again, I, I OD y'all. So I'm, a, I'm obsessed with work, right? I'm in the group every single night trying to go through every single video comment and everyone. If I show y'all the before and after videos in just a week, in 10 days, 
their minds are blown. They're looking at this like, whoa, like, are you kidding me? I could be this confident. Not, that's what I'm saying. Not just the technical. I can be this confident in front of the camera in just a week. So now I got to look back at myself and say, Moose, man, I am so embarrassed. I could have done this five years ago because I'm still teaching the basic principles. I ain't even get into none deep. I'm teaching the very, very yeah. basics that people can just take, like I said, their phone and go into it. But yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed, Moose, that it took me that long. I'm truly embarrassed. Hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, I, I don't I don't want you to speed past that though because I, I think that's the the stage that a lot of people unfortunately don't make it out of where they experience some level of success but they're still operating below their potential and for whatever reason they just can't see themselves the way the world sees them right like Nikki and I mm. were like you said almost abusing you in a good way, right? For good reason. I didn't say good almost. Intention. I didn't say almost. It was abusing me. Yeah, it, was it was abuse. Not, it was I was not abusing. I was not. But <sighs> but now that you can at least, now that you're on the other side of it and, and you can definitely start to see, you know, why we were saying what we were saying. Can you help someone who's in that stage right now that's not seeing themselves the way others are seeing them? And maybe they're telling him or her like, Yo, you should do this. You got to do this. Come on, go, go. And, and while they want to do it, they're just stuck. And, you know, I, I never believe that someone wants to be a failure or someone wants to be stuck or someone doesn't want to be happy, right? There's something internal there that's holding you back. And I think you just recently unlocked it. And I think it's awesome. It would be great if you definitely can talk about that a little bit more. Like, what was it? At the end of the day, what was it? Maybe it was something... Not even as big as you thought it was, but ultimately, what mm -hmm. was it? Well, at least give us a piece of it. I'll give you two things, Moose. The first one is, I'll go to the nice one first. The nice one first, and then I'll come back with how Nikki and Moose treated me. So the first one, Moose, is you think too much about what other people think. That's mm. the first one. You're really, really consumed about what other people think about you. And I think... Like, that is so dangerous. Like, it's so dangerous. Like, I got this whole thing now where I process, and it's like, if you do anything against the grain, let's think about it. So you got all these holidays, Thanksgiving, right? There's certain activities that everybody does on Thanksgiving. There's certain activities that everybody does on Christmas. Nikki, how long did I have my Christmas tree up? Do you still have it up? No, I don't. I took it down in <laughs> August this year, Moose. And I, the top wow. of this year, I started, Moose, I started doing things to prove to myself, like, why are you concerned with what other people think? So I left my Christmas tree up to August. And everybody's like, yo, why you got your Christmas tree up? Because I want it up. You still light it up? Not often, but sometimes. Is that sometimes a problem? Sometimes I do. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I like it. Like, I yeah. like the Christmas spirit. Why can't I have that in August? I can light it up. You know what I'm saying? Um, oof, I can light it up. Let's remove that. We're not lighting nothing mm. up with the Christmas tree, y'all. <laughs> We're talking about light up the Christmas, Christmas tree, tree right? Okay? Christmas tree. <laughs> if somebody just tuned in, they're like, oh, I know Carl was getting down like that. <laughs> um, so, no, Moose, I started proving to myself, you don't have to be concerned about what other people think, good or bad, right? Listen to what I'm saying, good or bad. Those people that think very highly of me, I appreciate it, but I need to be able to think highly of myself and prove to myself that I'm, I am that. Whatever you think of, I'm that. And those people that don't think highly of me, it doesn't matter. I'm going to prove to myself that I am higher than what you think of. You see what I'm saying? So I started doing simple things. Like I said, the Christmas tree. Like I just started doing things that, watch this, Moose, doing things that made Carl happy. That, mm. it, 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 I don't know if that will go over people's head, but I started getting up at 4.30 in the morning and going to the gym when I could. That was before all this. <laughs> right? And I would do an hour in the gym. And come back home. And that would set my day up in a way. Like, again, I wanted to feel like I had full control over my day. So no matter what I had, Moose, think about this. I go work out for an hour and I would push myself in the gym, right? I know y'all can't see it, but I worked out. But I'd push myself in the gym. When I get back home, dude, like the first hour of my day was the hardest hour of my day. Like I had to physically endure like working out. So anything else that came in that day, dude, I don't care what you think. I don't care how you feel. Like I did the hardest yeah. thing already. So I literally started putting like these, we call it habit stacking, little things in my life and just kind of building on them to just kind of get me out of what people think. And at that, at that point, Moose is just like, okay, so if I don't care what people think, then what do I want? 
What do I like? What do I want to do? And I started pursuing that, like unapologetically. Like I started, oh, the other simple one I would do, Moose. My wife taught me a valuable lesson. My wife was like, yo, I bought the phone to call people. I ain't bought it for them to call me per se. <laughs> All right. Dude, I would treat this thing like it was my employ employer. Right. Every time it rang, every message, like I'm responding, responding. I started just putting it on silent. I started leaving it in the other room and you'd be surprised most that. Let me just say that. Like that might be the first step for a lot of people. Just start that. Like, don't let the phone control you. Like it got to the point where my, my pocket, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but my pocket would vibrate and my phone wouldn't even on me. My phone upstairs in the wow. bedroom and I could feel my pocket. Like, Oh, where's my dude. The phone is not even on you. So I'm mm. saying start there. Start there. Like don't eat, like don't let your phone control you. Watch this. Unless it's making you money, then maybe you can let it. If these calls are money calls, you know, and there's real purpose behind them, sure. But if it's just responding and looking at ESPN and Clay Thompson hurt his ankle again, and like if it's just that, like we can find that out later on. We could do that on free time. In the gym, I watch ESPN while I'm working out and I could catch up on all that stuff. But it doesn't have to like distract me all day long. So I started putting things in perspective moves and just literally started to find out what made me happy happy what made me here's the kicker i realized that what made me happy actually made me better for my family a better husband a better father i come back from the gym and i got a different energy like i'm i'm excited i would so i said the hour in the gym because i would rush back home to be the first face my kids see when they got up so i know they're waking up they had an alarm set at 6 15 i'm getting home at 6 6 or 5 you know, rush in the house. And as soon as their alarm go off, I'm right there like, what? I, I'm creating energy in the house. Dude, all of this is because I started like, yo, what makes you happy? What do you want to do? So now my home is different, right? Now my environment is different. So everything around me is different because I'm taking what the key word is full ownership of my day. That's what I'm starting to do. Now the second one, like I said, this is the abusive way that Moose and Nikki treated me. So buckle up. I'm going to stall a little bit so y'all could get ready. But the second one is you're selfish. All right. And the reason I say you're selfish, you have a unique set of skills. You have a unique set of gifts. You have a unique experience, good and bad. There's people that went through some bad stuff. Like I don't have to like soft, you know, be soft on that. Eric Thomas was a high school dropout, homeless, didn't have his dad. Right. There are people that went through good and bad stuff. You got a very unique experience. And the world needs to hear from you. There's somebody else that's going through the experience that you went through. There's other people that's going through stuff that you can help. And because you're concerned about what people think and you might not do it right, there are other people suffering because you're not doing that. At Moose, as I'm doing Solo Creator Pro, I'm listening to people that want to share with the world, but they just didn't have the tool. So now watch this, all these people that are willing to help, we got somebody that's a lupus survivor in the group. We got somebody that just lost their mom and these people want to get on camera and talk to other people in their situation, but they don't have the tool. Who has the tool? I have the tool and I'm being selfish and holding the tool back and not sharing my gift with the world because I don't feel confident or I feel insecure. And the selfishness moves was the thing like, yo, when I, when I saw that, it's just like, dude, you are selfish. Like you're just literally thinking about yourself now and not doing what you could do to help the people around you. And I'm telling you, a couple hundred people in the group and I'm seeing, let me just be transparent. I haven't seen a negative review yet. I'm not, I don't know if there is or there isn't. I have not seen a negative review moves all because I decided I was going to do something different. So what if each of us decided to do something different, not be comfortable, not waste the time that we have in the whatever quarantine time we have, whatever. If you work in 80 hours a week, still not wasting time, using the extra, once you get up from sleep 30 minutes early, using that extra time to be impactful, to create something, to do you. Like what impact would, would that have on the world? So I'm telling y'all like, man, stop being selfish. And the, 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 I guess the, the kicker for me was understanding this. You don't have to be a 10 to teach a two. I always thought I had to be a 10. So that was the hurdle that kept me back for so long because I didn't think I was the best. I'm not James Cameron, Spike Lee, and these you know huge movie producers. How dare me teach somebody? But dude, there's people that's at a level zero, there's people at a level one, a level two, that I'm at least, I'm gonna say I might be a five. Let me be, I might be in the middle of the road somewhere. I'm a five. Well, I can teach zero, one, two, three, four, and maybe a five if I'm confident enough. That's half the people, half, you see what I'm saying, that are interested that I can actually relate to and I can let the 10 teach the whoever they get. 
but there are people that are my responsibility that I need to take care of. And now that I have full ownership of that moose, and that's what I want people to understand. Once you take full ownership of that, now it takes the pressure off of you to be perfect because they want the imperfect version of you. It takes the pressure off you to have everything correct because I want you to see that I'm still making mistakes, but you, but I'm not scared to try anymore. Right. That's what I want people to understand and see. Just try it. If it fails, watch this. If it fails, now, you know, something that you that doesn't work. So now we could try something else. There's I say this all the time. There's nothing such as failure anymore for me. It's all learning. There's, failure doesn't exist anymore. It's all learning. Everything I do, I learn a way to, to do it or I learn a way not to do it. So if I can simplify it to that, well, why am I not trying more? I should be skydiving tomorrow. I'm not, pause on that one. But why am I not trying more stuff, right? If there's no, like, no failure, right? Again, I'm just retooling my mind, Moose. If you see, I, I, if you see, if you're a hammer, you see, like, you see the whole world as nails. If that's your only tool, you just want to, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, now I'm trying to sharpen that tool, but also, like, use other tools and realize that there's nothing that God has blessed me with for me. It's for me to share everything that he's blessed me with, especially my experience, what I know, what I've learned, what I've gone through is for me to share. So it's not about me no more. So stop being selfish. That's what I'll tell y'all. Man, I think that's seven. I think that's seven, y'all. Yeah, I don't, Moose, I don't, I don't even know if we need a final words. I don't, I, okay, you know what? I'm just going to do announcements. I don't even know. <laughs> right. I'm just, right. I was going to do announcements because I don't, I don't know where to go from there. That was too deep. I don't, I don't get it. Look, real quick, we're just going to pause the situation and say, listen, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. on Facebook, facebook.com slash Nikki and Moose, we go live. So go join us there. Follow us on all social media at Nikki and Moose. Um, yeah, the, I, the, it, it, we're already at like an hour and something, and I feel like he has more oh, wow. to give. So this well, is I what we're going to do. that long already. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, fine. I, I don't even know if I should say final words, Moose. I don't, <laughs> this is what I'll say. Okay. Carl, what, what is next? Like, talk to us a bit. You go along if you want to, but. Talk to us a bit about what is next, if you have something to follow after that. I want, so I, I wrote this line in my phone, like the world measures you on IQ. I want to measure you on I can. Like I want to measure what you're capable of doing. I'm not on IQ anymore. So I'm, I'm going to try to make this simple, Nick. I was thinking about this this morning, actually. So the, what's, my, I'm going to switch the question to everything is next. Whatever I can think about, it's next. Like, I have no reservations now because, man, I'm going to try to do this in a simple way of moves. I'm going to go back to physics class. So y'all forgive me. I'm going to tap into my little science background, right? There are two equations, and I, I don't know why I remember this of everything from physics, but there's something called kinetic energy and there's something called potential energy. And the potential energy is generally referred to as gravitational potential energy. And some y'all might need to write this down. I'm going to get a little scientific but we're going to do a little bit of equations right here. So the kinetic, the formula for kinetic energy only has two variables. It has a mass and a velocity. All right. So it's just literally the equation is a half MV squared, but don't worry about all that. It's two variables. Let's keep it simple. Kinetic energy is equal to, you know, you got this M variable, which is mass. And then you got this V variable, which is basically your speed. All right. Potential. And I hate the word potential. I don't use hate a lot, but I hate the word potential moose because what you said earlier, like, man, Carl, you play the piano. You do this, you do that, you do that. Like, I heard this a lot growing up as a kid. Man, you got so much potential. You're going to... The challenge with potential is... So let me, let me break the formula down. Potential energy has three variables. It has mass, it has gravity, and it has height. Three things, right? So you look at this bottle that I'm holding... And it has potential energy. It's not moving, but it has the potential that if I let it go, it could, it could drop. But there are three variables. Mass. I know I'm going super slow on purpose, Nikki, so forgive me. Oh, but good. mass, gravity, and height. Watch this. Of those three, you have no control over gravity. 
and you have no control over height. Only thing is the mass, right? And I want you to put yourself in the equation. That's the only real part of it you control. You go back to kinetic energy and it's mass times speed. Two variables, both of which you can control. So the reason why I hit potential so much is because nothing happens. Nothing has to happen. Like it just has, it has the potential to do something. And Nikki, that's how I felt my entire life. And to answer your question, now that I understand that I only need to focus on the two variables I can control, my mass, me, and the speed in which I operate, that's it. So whatever I want to do, if I want to go become a painter tomorrow, it's my mass, right? And I said it, I said it on a call earlier that I had, um, the ground crew call, was I do a training call. And I was, this came out this morning, literally, when I talked to the ground crew group. And I said it like this, your responsibility now is to move your mass. I kept it PG-13, right? <laughs> But that's what I'm asking people to do. <laughs> like PG-13, right? We're going to keep it clean. I like that. Right? <laughs> Nikki and Musa are well-respected individuals. I'm going to keep it clean for them. Move your mask. That's what I'm chat. So now that I understand, Nikki, that's all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The, hey, now that I understand. S -S, right. right. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Now that I understand, Nikki, that it's all under my control, yeah. what's to stop me? Like I said, if I want to go paint tomorrow, it's just a matter of how fast can I learn that, but I can go do that. If I want whatever I want to do, as long as I'm interested and I'm willing to put that time in and move in that direction, it's done. So to answer your question, what's next is I'm going to build a solo creator pro platform into a content creator network. That's that's what's next. If anything related to media you want to learn, you're going to be able to come to this network and learn editing, learn design, web design, whatever, anything that relates to social media, like edit any of that. We're going to create that platform. That's what's immediately next. And then from there, Nikki, I'm taking over the world. That's what's next. Right. There's no stopping. It. Jeez. We are eight, y'all. We are eight. We are um, eight. But. Uh, real quick, for all our YouTube viewers, can we just acknowledge the background of Moose? Can we just... Oh, can man. We, I'm telling you, if you are listening to this, you are missing something yeah. monumental because this view is just screaming New York, penthouse, <laughs> I made it, um, ha ha, all this stuff. I just want to put that out there that I, I, I uh -huh. want to... Like, I want to acknowledge my friend's view that I'm very jealous Fire. of. And now it makes me feel like I need to get a virtual background, which I never thought I would do. <laughs> but I feel like I need a virtual background because his background's so fire. I just I just want to put that out there. I don't Moose, how does it feel to, to to make it? How does it feel to uh, make I'm it? I'm talking about make no, it, make no, it. No, 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 no. I'm 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 far from making it, right? I'm I, I think I'm I'm still uh Operating on potential right now. I got to take Carl's advice and get on that kinetic boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, move, move the mass, move the mass. No, Let's but it's, it's, it's a shot. No, for real though. Thanks to Nikki, of course, Carl, and uh, brother Nick, man, for for helping me get this set up straight because uh, you know I, I was all a mess with the light and and yeah, it's, it's good to, to to have some at least halfway decent. You know, just to match the, the ambiance. Listen, he just screams New York. I I wanted to end the episode. Fire with acknowledging this <laughs> we're just gonna leave it on him from now on when we go back to the regular episodes we're just gonna leave it on him with this view <laughs> i just want to put that out there that was that was fine look carl thank you let me bring you back let me bring you back carl thank you for for coming on um everybody i'm gonna make this hold on let me go to me because i don't think y'all understand i am <laughs> the person i am today for real, for real, because of Carl, right? He didn't want to listen to me when I said this on Facebook, so I'm going to say it on the podcast so it can live forever. Here we go. So I am in the position and doing the things I am because of Carl, because he took a chance on me. So it was important for us when we had a platform for him to be the first one on because of what he did for me. And I know Moose has his own story with Carl, but he can't do no wrong in my eyes ever, 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 ever. Even I can't if he, tell, Moose, all the blows I be getting, I can't tell. 
Uh, well, that's the thing. I'm a high pilot and a high flight attendant, so I'm going to curse you out nine out of ten times and then check on you and see how you're doing. That's what I'm going to do. So uh, thank you, Carl, from the bottom of my heart. And then I'll, I'll let Moose say something nice. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Um, as always, grateful for you. You know, uh, I remember when we first met uh, back at Alma. I was still in college, man. I don't Alma know if you college. Remember that. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I was still, still in college, man. And, and you guys got to hang out after he spoke. And we were just kicking it almost for what felt like an hour, right? So mm -hmm. uh, to continue to build our relationship from then till now. But more importantly, man, just just thank you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for uh, enduring because I know it's been a, it's been a lot. And you endured and kind of gave us an opportunity to experience what you could have kept in your back pocket that has essentially given us the opportunity to all step up in our own outright and find our voices, mm -hmm. find our, you know, ourselves in a way. And now we can all sit here and kind of look back, but also look to the future and say, hey, there's a lot more to come because what we just found out, what we just discovered is only getting better. So all of that to say, Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to, you know what I'm saying, just take a chance on you. We're, we're so excited. I'm so excited that you're finally seeing who Carl is from, from our eyes, right? Because we, we've always seen this. We're like, yo, this dude is, is incredible. And yeah, no, this is, this is awesome. I'm excited for you. And uh, just promise us you're going to come back, you know, maybe within a year <laughs> when this whole, you know, when the whole university and the, the world takeover is happening. So yes, you can sir. update us on how that happened. Real quick, I, uh, I where could they get your program and all that great stuff? Where did they follow you? Because you're on social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal, people. I don't think uh. you understand. Uh, next is going to be CJ, but we're, we're going to work on that. But he's Wait on social media. Where can they find hey. you? Where can they sign up for the next one? What's up? Solo Creator Pro, everything Solo Creator Pro, guys. Every platform, Instagram, um, we're posting at least daily on Instagram. Nikki's going to, I'm sure, get me posting more soon. But we're just starting to, you know, build slowly. But IG, you can go to the website, solocreatorpro.com, guys, and sign up for the challenge. And again, you don't have to have no experience. You just got to be willing to learn. That's it. Be coachable. That's mm -hmm. all I'm asking. I don't care how techy you are or not. Just be willing to be coachable, man. And we're going to, I'm telling you, in 21 days, we're going to have you feeling like you are E.T. the hip hop preacher himself. All right. So let's get to work, man. Let's go. Moose, final no, words. I, I, I got to kick this one back. Carl, do the Ooh. honors, man. I got, oh, wow. Ooh. I got to call the audible on this one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> got to bring the bomb on that one. Go ahead, Carl. Um, I got you. I, I, one of the uh, appropriately, I'm actually going to take this from one of my members of the Solo Creator Pro Challenge. He did a video this week and he talked about, you know, b back in the days when we had CDs, right? You play a CD and the CD skipped. You would go and you would look because you knew, oh man, the CD must be scratched. And his challenge to the group is my challenge to you now locate the scratch, right? Locate the scratch. But locate it. I don't know if they ever worked. I never did it, guys. But, you know, there's like different fluids. You can buff it out and all that. Try to get the seed. I never did all that. But I want you to take that same approach now to your life. Locate the scratch. You are doing some things now. Some are going well. Some are not going well. Find that thing. Find that scratch. Find that thing that's not working. And let's buff it out. Like, you don't have to, like, keep doing the same thing. Like, I promise you guys. Like, you just heard me talk about my transition. I, it, it wasn't like this magical thing that happened. It was locating the scratch and being intentional about going after like the purpose that God put you here for. So I'm challenging you, locate that scratch and fix it, man. That's it. 